Yes, hello everyone. Everyone, Welcome to the live stream. We're going to talk about how to lose 50 pounds in under six months if you're a guy over the age of 50. But this is really suitable for anyone, say, over the age of 40, man or woman, who's got a reasonable amount of weight to lose, has about 50 pounds of weight to lose. So it should be a really fun, uh, should be a really fun live stream. You know, if you show up every single week, some of this stuff might be a little bit of a, of a re review for you, but if you're brand new, I think you're gonna find it like somewhat eye-opening. It should be like really exciting. And also, guys, I'm wearing my contacts today. I hope <laughs> I hope I can see everybody's comments. I'm really trying to get used to these to these contacts. We'll see how it goes. Also, you know, we'll do a Q and A at the end. We'll do the Q and A in in the middle. Whatever questions you have. And also, if you're out there, just give me a thumbs up. Let me know everything is looking good. And Sam is good. Yeah, it's interesting, Chris. You're, I see Chris's comment came up on my phone, but let's see if it's coming on the feed. Hey, Chris, Dynamite, Chris. Everything sounds good, Al. Thanks so much. And I'm actually going live today on YouTube. I'm going live on my Mike Cola Fitness, my, my small group, my low carb intermittent fasting group. But I'm actually going live on LinkedIn today, too. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if we get some comments. From LinkedIn. So this is what we're going to get a cup. I know Chris. Chris has been here every week, so this might be a review for him. But it's still nice to ask you questions and and just like to reinforce things that you already know. So we're going to go over my calorie deficit formula. We'll go over why I think cycling calories. That means some days eating more, some days eating less, is a great strategy for long-term weight loss. It helps keep the metabolism up, in my opinion. And then we'll talk about why I think you should always eat an adequate amount of fiber and protein within the diet. Protein is key, calories, protein. We're gonna go into this in great detail. And then we'll go, we're gonna also talk about why I think taking a diet break, specifically every every six weeks or so, like going to maintenance calories, is a really good thing for long-term weight loss. Plus it makes the it makes your weight loss journey a lot more sustainable when you can take diet breaks every six weeks or so and maybe eat maintenance calories. Then we'll talk about my favorite time restricted eating formula which makes which makes staying in a calorie deficit a lot easier and then we'll do a QA and and i'll show you some of my meals at the end but let's see who else is here harry it's here hey mike looking good yes i know i got my contacts no glasses on today <laughs> not that i look so good but i like uh, not having to wear my glasses and it's so much easier with the lights i have all these lights here to light up this live stream when i have my glasses on the lights are always reflecting off my glasses it drives me nuts i hate how that looks hey we got jeff jeff this is Jeff. I uh, started in the middle again, but coming through fine now. Oh, really? That, that's interesting. I'm going to wait next time when I go live. I'll wait like a full 30 seconds. I used to use a countdown, but I was told not to do that. Maybe I'll start doing the countdown again just to make do. Make do. Hey, from, uh, Patel from the UK. Thanks so much from London. Oh, my man Steve is here. Thanks so much, Steve, for showing up. I hope you had a good 4th of July. Hope you and the family is doing great. Good luck with the contacts. Thanks. I know. Let, let's see how it works. You know, and let's see uh, who else is here. Oh, yeah, you, you, you always look good. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. That's great. All right, so let's dive right. Let's let's dive right into this. Maybe we'll get some new people. Also, give me a thumbs up, guys, on YouTube. It's good for the algorithm to share this thing around. You know, share it, send it to anyone you think it might help. Because I think new people are really going to benefit from this. Because some of you guys who will hear here all the time, this is going to be somewhat of of a review. They, they play a 16 second ad whenever you, oh, they do. I didn't realize that. Maybe that's why. Uh, maybe I, I didn't even realize I had um, monetization turned on. Thanks, Chris. I have to, uh, I'll make a note of that. Either I can turn that off or I can make sure I wait like 30 seconds before I start. Hey, Alexandra, thanks for showing up. I'm curious to see, hear how everyone's doing this week. Okay, let's go right into it. So let's go over. I know you guys have heard this, but if you're new, this will be new to you. You know, when you have 50 pounds to lose, you know, obviously it's a lot of weight. Let's say you're a guy that weighs 250 pounds, right? You want to get to 200 pounds as quickly as possible. And I think it's really possible to do it in six months or less. You really can lose 50 pounds. But you got to, you know, you got to be pretty strict. You really got to stick to the program. But obviously, you have to be in a calorie deficit, right, to lose weight. You know, it, it, there's really no <laughs> there's really no way around it. I know there's food quality and there's hormones are involved in this and that. But you have to really have to be in a calorie deficit. And my favorite formula, I know you guys have heard me say this before, is to multiply your body weight by 10 or 11. So say you're that 250 pound guy, right? You, you really want to get down to 200. I would say eat, you know, 2,500 calories should be a nice calorie deficit. 
for you. Hey, Susan. Hey, Susan. Thanks for showing up too. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. So I think that's a, just like a nice sweet spot, 10, 11 times your body weight. You can even go a little bit higher. You know, because I've been, I've been doing a lot of videos specifically on this on Instagram and TikTok where I pick specific weights. And people always come back to me and say, Mike, like, where are you pulling this 10 times body weight formula from? And it's really just like personal experience from just dealing with hundreds of people over the last literally 35, 40 years of doing this. And I find that's a nice sweet spot. It's somewhat aggressive, 10 times your body weight. I think you can even be in a nice calorie deficit at 12 times your body weight and still do really well. You could use one of those online calculators if you want to get a little more sophisticated and enter at your activity level. But I think a general rule, I think 2,500 is really nice. Like I always say, maintenance calories is probably around 15 times your body weight. So for this individual, if they were eating like 3,500, 3,700 calories a day, say you're 250 pounds, you probably wouldn't be losing weight. You'd be at equilibrium. You'd be at maintenance. But to lose weight, you're going to go down to 2,500 calories. You know, 3,500 calories to a pound of body fat. So literally, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in a calorie deficit of about 1,250 calories every three days or so. You can be a pound lighter if you look at it like that. If you look at the numbers, but it gets a little more complicated than that. Let's see what Jeff's got to say. I have to go. This is Jeff. I have to go away less than that. Okay. I have to go way less than that to lose weight. My body holds on to everything. Yeah, no, it's true. Everyone's a little bit different. Your metabolism can be a little bit different. I mean, you can go to eight times. I just find that generally, and I know you've been, you, you know, you're a tennis guy, Jeff, and, and you're pretty, and you're working out all the time, which is a factor for sure. And I mean, people can go as low as, you know, you can go to 1,200 calories, right? But it'd be, it'd be really hard, in my, in, in my opinion, for you, because I know what your body weight is. With 1,200 calories, I don't think you have too much muscle on you. I think you'd have a hard time taking in enough protein, vitamins, minerals, nutrients. You, but you can go 2,000, 1,800. I'd probably do really well. But I do like the idea of cycling. So this 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 like protocol is going to be one day you're going to eat more calories, which is 10 times your body weight. But the second day, which is slide number two, you're going to multiply your goal weight by 10 or 11. So this say this guy's 250. Say he's 50 years old, he's 250, he wants to weigh 200. Day one, he's going to eat 2,500 calories. And I'll break down the macros as we go. Day two will be a lot more aggressive, maybe more of what Jeff's talking about. And he'll go with 2,000 calories day two. And I like the idea of cycling calories for multiple reasons. We'll see. When, I'll give you an example of exactly what I mean. Like day one, Monday, 2,500. Day two, 2,000. Someone like Jeff who feels like he needs to go lower he may go 2,000 Monday. He may go, say, 17, 1,600 Tuesday. But it's nice to cycle calories. The more food, when you eat food, it actually boosts your metabolism. The thermic effect of food from protein. Plus, I think the diet's a lot more sustainable. When you have days where you can eat a little bit more, other days you eat a little bit less. It all comes about your calorie deficit for the week or for the month as opposed to day to day. I think it's good for, you'll see in the next slide, for metabolic adaptation. But this, but I, people always ask me this whenever I do these short videos of like calorie cycling. They always say, what do I do day three? You just keep on following it. So 25, 2,000, 25, 2,000. Jeff might be 2,000, 1,600, 2,000, 1,600. I think it's really good for, for giving your metabolism a little boost. Because th this, is, this is a slide that I always show all the time. This is um, why calorie cycle. Calorie cycling, some days eat more, other days eat less. It has to do with metabolic adaptation. Like whenever you lose weight, your metabolism slows down to some degree because you're smaller, you're a smaller person. You can over-exaggerate that metabolic adaptation from just restricting calories too aggressively. That's another thing, Jeff, that I'd probably rather you lose weight a little bit slower and not go too extreme with the calorie deficit. But I, I know you've been doing this for a while, so you probably know what, when you know where you're at, what you have to eat that helps you lose weight without going too far. But to be like, you know, and everyone always references, I reference it all the time too, like the biggest loser of the TV show where they study the participants who dramatically reduce calories, like next to nothing. They were eating who knows how low. These people were 350 pounds. They were losing 30 pounds a week, like insane numbers. They were eating next to nothing. They were working out insanely. And they just, they just overdid it. And even years later, unfortunately, so many people gained their weight back based on that TV show and their metabolisms were all messed up because they over-exaggerated metabolic adaptation. And this is a little debatable. When you look at the research, it doesn't necessarily conclusively say that calorie cycling 
is a good thing. It's somewhat mixed, the information. I've read some studies saying of talking about taking a diet break every every six weeks is a good thing for long-term weight loss. Other, other studies say no. But just from my personal experience of working with literally hundreds, if not thousands of people over the years, I find calorie cycling works really well. And it, most physique athletes, like bodybuilders, will cycle the calories. I think, I think it's a really good thing to do. One day eat more, one day eat less. There's other ways of doing it. Like you can have up calorie weeks, low calorie weeks, up calorie months, low calorie. You know, there's so many different ways of doing it. But I like, I think it works so well. I've had great success with people. Ten times their body weight day one, ten times the goal weight day two. It gets a little. It doesn't really work that well when you don't have that much weight to lose. Like I, I have a video on um, TikTok explaining to women how they can go from 150 pounds down to 120 pounds. Right, but, but so many women contacted me and said, Mac, Mike, I weigh 130, I want to weigh 120, I only have 10 pounds to lose. You know, they eat 1,300 calories one day and 12 the next, that's kind of, it's, 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 it's too tight. And you won't even be able to accurately determine that 100 calories anyway. But when you have 50 pounds to lose, that 500 calorie difference from day to day, I think is, is, is a good thing. Mm. And then by, by just, you know, cycling your calories, you're going to minimize, in my opinion, that metabolic adaptation by eating more one day, eating less the other day. I, I hope I explained that well. Okay, and then the next thing, okay, so number one, you gotta get into a calorie deficit, right? There's so many different ways of doing it, but that's my formula. Then the second most important thing I think is definitely protein. You have to eat an adequate amount of protein. Protein's the building block to the body. I say this over and over again, when you're losing weight, if you're not eating enough protein, if you're reducing protein, you're gonna lose muscle mass. The whole key, obviously, you want to lose, you know, you want to lose body fat, right? And you want to maintain your muscle mass, which is great for your metabolism, great for your, you know, your bones, just for aging, for longevity. Especially if you're over 50, you want to preserve as much muscle as possible. If not, put on muscle, especially when you get older. You know, it's so so important, and you need more protein when you get older. And this is my general formula. I didn't put my more sophisticated one. The best way of doing it, but you really have to know what your body fat is. And it's so hard, in my opinion, to really determine what your body fat is, unless you're doing one of those DEXA scans or you, you know, you're being underwater weighed. You can use those scales, electrical impedance scales, but they're pretty inaccurate. Um, I, so, I mean, the best way would probably be 0.9, 0 0.9 times your body fat. It's just so hard to do that. So I like this other formula, and I've seen different variations of this, like 0 0.7 grams, uh, Okay, 0 0.7 grams multiplied by your goal weight if you have a lot of weight to lose, like 50 pounds. So this guy who's 250 wants to weigh 200, I would multiply 200 pounds by 0 0.7, which is 140 grams of protein. I think you can even go more. You know, I'm less than 200. I eat 150 grams of protein a day, but I think that's a, a reasonable amount. If someone doesn't have a lot of weight to lose, say you're that gal I was talking about who watched my other video, who weighs 130 pounds and she wants to weigh 120, I would just go with 130. If you have maybe 30 pounds or more to lose, I would probably calculate my protein based on goal weight. But if you have like 20, 25 pounds, I think you can use, just use your body weight and multiply that by 0 0.7. Well, hey Gwen, great, great to see you here. How we doing? I'm um, 156, I'd love to be 120. So what's that, that's 36 pounds? Yeah, Gwen, so in your case, you can eat, I think you can easily go like maybe 1,600 calories day one, maybe go like 12, 1,300 calories day two. And in your case, I, you, you may even wanna go in the middle. Let me do it for you. You may even, let me see how much, um, I'm gonna multiply 120 by 0.7. Let me see where that puts you at. Like 120 pounds, which is goal weight times 0 0.7, which would be my protein. That's 84 grams of protein. I probably want you to go more. I probably want you to use, I probably want you to eat about 100 grams of protein a day just to make sure you're getting enough protein. So like, so if we used 156 times 0 0.7, that'd be 109 grams. Yeah, I, I would eat 100 grams of protein. Go on, do something like that. So you can go 15, 12, or 16, 1300, you know, 1600 calories one day, 1300 calories the next. Make sure you're taking in at least 100 grams of protein. Let's see what Alexandra's got to say here. Okay. Okay, Mike, I told my 75-year-old grandmother to start taking a protein shake. Do you think that's enough? Well, I think it's probably a good thing for especially a whey protein 
isolate type shake. It's good for you, you know, that calcium and the whey protein is really good. High in the leucine, high in that most important muscle building amino acid. Good for her bones. I think it'll even be good for your skin, hair, and nails. She may even like a little collagen protein as well because it's really good for your skin, hair, and nails, especially when you get older. I would say Alexandra, it really depends on how much protein she, she's getting in the rest of her diet. Because you probably wouldn't want to do more than one scoop, which will be about 25 grams of protein. But she should be getting numbers. She should be eating numbers like this. If she's, I mean, I would multiply her body weight by like 0 0.7. I don't know what she weighs. If you can find out now, we can do it. And I would want her to eat that many grams of protein per day. So if she's eating, you know, eat, eat the chicken, the fish, the meat, the eggs, the Greek yogurt. I mean, a protein supplement could be a really nice thing too. Um, but I think, I, you know, it really depends on how much protein she's taking in. Okay, and that's my um, and that's my protein formula. Plus, protein has the highest satiety out of all the macronutrients. Protein, fats, are carbs, fat a little bit too, but generally, when you're taking in protein, obviously not in a protein shake, as you can mix whey protein right in water. But generally, when you're taking in protein, you're taking in fat as well, like your salmon, your sardines, your, your red meat, your, even your, your your poultry and your eggs, the whole eggs, the Greek yogurt if it's if it's a full fat type yogurt, like a five percent yogurt you're getting the protein the fat which is incredibly satisfying plus i talk about this all the time too out of all the macronutrients protein fats and carbs protein has the highest stomach effect so for every 100 calories you eat a protein say you have a piece of salmon say it is 300 calories because maybe half of it is fat and you're getting 150 um calories of protein you're going to burn up 50 50 calories just from digesting and processing the pro protein that's why when you calculate these like numbers when it comes to losing weight like 3500 calories is one pound is not necessarily true when it comes to protein because protein has a stomach effect so if you put someone on a diet on a high protein diet who say eating 2000 calories like i'm recommending here as the as opposed to someone who's eating 2000 calories and say eating a low protein diet the net calories will be higher on the group that's not eating the protein you know besides that they're going to lose muscle mass which is going to slow the metabolism down you know calories and protein are so, so key. That's another diet I love too, is that PE diet. Um, Ted Neal missed the book. That's a great book, the PE diet. I love that book. I read it a number of times if you ever want to look it up. And it's, a, it, it's an easy book to read. It's, you can get it an e-book. It's really inexpensive. He's a doctor who used to be a vegetarian. And he's pretty fit now too. I think he grew up with a family of vegetarians and all that. And then, I don't know, maybe about 10 years ago, he totally flipped, became a meat eater, high protein. He's even higher protein than me. He'll tell you just eat 200 grams of protein a day and he's an MD smart guy he does he does really well that's a great book he's like a little bit of an artist too he has some nice like like uh, pictures in the book and all that I just want to pull up the YouTube feed again too in case I'm missing any questions okay, let's see okay cool okay let's go to the next slide and all oh, right and, and that's the other thing I just want to make a point of with a little note on the bottom of this slide even on your lower calorie days never cut back on protein so this particular guy who's 250 he goes 2,500 calories one day eats that 140 grams of protein, if not more. Even on the day when he goes to 2,000 calories, he's just eating less, say, carbs and fat, but he's still keeping his protein up. You always keep your protein up. Literally, like I use the term, other people use this term too, is like backfill. As long as, you eat, as long as you're meeting your calorie requirements, you're not going over calories, and you're eating an adequate amount of protein, you can do really well backfilling with almost any food you want. I don't really want to do that because you'll see in the next slide I want you to eat fiber, I want you to eat vegetables, a couple of fruits, and eat really healthy. But you can do incredibly well almost eating anything as long as you're getting an adequate amount of protein and you're taking and you're keeping your calories in line. You can do really, really well. But I want you to eat even healthier. That's why I like to throw the fiber in. Okay, let's let's see, Alexandra. I think you talked about a grandmother. She won't tell me how much she weighs, but I'm guessing 160. So let's say 160. And I, I don't know if she, if she does or doesn't want to lose weight, but let's see, at 160, we're going to multiply 160 by 0 0.7. That's 112. So she should definitely be eating about 110, even a, a minimum of 100 grams of protein a day. And every, you know, like we say, every four ounces of chicken, fish, or meat is about 25 grams. So, for example, if she had like an eight ounce piece of salmon for lunch, That'll be 50 grams, you know, maybe some grilled chicken or whatever she's having for dinner, along with vegetables and all that. Another eight ounces, that will bring it to 100. 
or if that's too much for her, six ounces and six, that'll bring her probably to 80. And then she can have a Greek yogurt for breakfast, which is 15. Every egg is about six or seven grams of protein. She can have like a three egg omelet in the morning with a little piece of fruit, right? She can have, you know, eight ounces of salmon, you know, for lunch with on top of a salad, similar how I would eat. And then for dinner, she can have some grilled chicken with two different colored vegetables. She'd easily reach a protein requirement for the day. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, it gets a lot more challenging. Vegetarians, it's, it's a lot easier because vegetarians will eat, eat dairy and they'll eat, uh, obviously, they'll eat eggs. Vegans, it's challenging. I mean, I think you have to mostly get your protein. And I've, I, it's funny because I've been training this guy for a while now. He's a nice guy. He's like a famous artist and he's, uh, he's a vegan. I've been training him for like three years. He's doing really well. And he loves all. I'm not that familiar with them. I've never even had one. He's getting most of, of his protein. Now, first, we were doing a lot of protein powders like pea protein and hemp seed, but he was getting bloated from them and, and all that. So he switched over to all those plant meats and he absolutely loves them. And he's, I, see, I see the difference in his body already in the last three months since he gets most of the protein now from those plant meats. There's, you know, there's some things in there that may be not so great in those plant meats. Um, you know, they may put some artificial things, some yes, some no. I'm not that familiar with them. But they say the texture, it's a, if you're a vegan, you, uh, you, I think you have to go that route if you're into maintaining your muscle mass or putting on muscle for sure. Okay, so the next one is, um, all right, we, we're on the fiber slide. So as opposed to, like I said, as opposed to just backfilling those calories, right? So you got your calories in line, say you're eating 25, 2000, taking in all that protein. Instead of just backfilling with anything, obviously I'd rather you guys eat healthy, you know, a whole natural diet. So if you also say to yourself, you know, I used to say 35 grams of fiber here in this slide, but People, everyone said to me, Mike, I just can't do it. You know, when I'm when you're in those lower calorie ranges, more like the 1500 calories or the 1200, it can be a little challenging to get like 35 grams of fiber. If you're this guy, though, I used to have this slide with 35 grams. If you if you're eating 2500 calories and 2000 the next day, you can easily get to 35. Like I eat, you know, I don't know, 2000 calories a day, a lot. I can easily get. 35 grams of fiber, if not more. You know, one source is an avocado, which is like 15, 16 grams right there. So you're halfway there just from that avocado. But if you can just take in 25 grams of fiber a day, you're going to be eating healthy because you're going to have to have a few servings of vegetables, maybe a fruit or two, an avocado, right? Salads, as opposed to just backfilling with, with junk food, even though that will work too. But this is the better way of doing it. So you're trying to, you know, you want to eat like a nutrient dense type diet calories, protein, fiber. If you focus on those three things, you just cannot go wrong. You really can't. You know, obviously, eliminating the processed foods makes you replace you know, makes you replace them with vegetables and fruit. So if you didn't use the fiber formula and you just went with calories and protein, you can still do good. But I don't think your blood work will be as healthy. I I, I think you'll do you'll be a a fitter, healthier person going with the fiber. Plus, fiber satisfying too, similar to the protein and the fat. There's a lot of satiety in fiber. I would go. Protein, fat, fiber it will keep you satisfied for hours. That's why I, if you see, people say, Mike, eat the same foods over time. I like to simpl simplify my life when it comes to lunch. But I eat an avocado every day, one of the most satisfying foods you can eat. Loaded with fiber, loaded with potassium, right, 300, 350 calories. Then I'm eating a nice piece of protein. I mean, I'm not hungry for hours. Sometimes I'm not even hungry when I'm supposed to eat dinner, you know, from a lunch like that. And then what I think makes this whole process easier and... Um, even though I do think though down the road when more and more studies come out about intermittent fasting and time restricted eating, I think the benefits are going to be more than just calorie restriction, even though that's the camp that I'm in right now, because the science is somewhat mixed when it comes to intermittent fasting and time restricted eating, like it, 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 mixed meaning that is it really better than restricting calories? Maybe, maybe not. I personally think it is because I do think there's a tremendous benefit of being in a fasted state for 16, 18 hours in multiple ways. One thing is you keep the insulin hormone low, right, which is, which could possibly help reverse insulin resistance, especially if you're type 2 diabetic. You want to control your blood sugar by not eating for 16, 18 hours. It's great for controlling blood sugar. Mentally, it just it makes you realize that, you know, you, 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 like food is not running your life. Like you don't live around every meal. I've had clients for years with their whole life focuses around breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, they're always talking about what are we having for dinner? What are we having for lunch? You know, where are we go? You know, it, it's it's really, 
it's empowering to know that you can, like after doing that three-day fast, it's like for me to fast for 20 hours is nothing. It's nice to know that you don't have to eat you know, every three hours or, and, and, and you may have friends or family members where you go to the restaurant and they say, oh, I'm, st-, you know, you have these people, I'm always starving. You know, they get to the restaurant, they got to grab the bread. Can you please bring some bread? You know, when you do these 16 hour, like a 16 eight, like I have up here, you fast for 16 hours, taking all the calories in eight hour eating window. It's empowering in that way. You know that you can go 20 hours. You don't have to eat consist all the time. I think that's a tremendous advantage right there. And, and then we got autophagy which is somewhat of a debatable topic. Yes, I think it is a good thing, great for longevity, exactly when it kicks in. I did a video not that long ago, maybe a, maybe a month or two ago, on, on a recent study came out saying that, no, maybe autophagy does, does kick in in maybe 16 hours. But previous beliefs were saying, no, it takes a little bit more time. You gotta fast for like 24, 36 hours for a little bit of an uptick in autophagy. And autophagy stands for like the recycling of like a weak and damaged organ out, which is really good. So who knows, like weak cancer cells can die off, you know, in your body, things like that, possibly. Mm. And this is by, by far my favorite fasting routine. So even if you're counting calories, maybe, you know, you use MyFitnessPal, you track your calories for a week or two, and then you get, you're just so sick of doing it. But you kind of know what 2,500 calories, what 2,000 calories is. It's so much easier to stick to it when you're only eating two meals. That's why I love TUMAD. That's what TUMAD stands for, two meals a day. Sometimes it's hard to take in enough protein with only two meals. So that's why I like to throw in a protein bar, protein shake. And this is my favorite um, long-term fasting strategy by far. You do it every day because I was called time-restricted eating. You don't do it intermittently. You fast for 16 hours. Then it's debatable that early to late, right? Like I always, like we were talking about, but about a year ago, how a lot of the new research came out saying that early time restricted eating probably is better for your circadian rhythm, that 24 hour internal clock when it comes to your hormones, your genes, things, the reactions like that, as opposed to doing a later time restricted eating. Meaning that you would break your fast at 10 o'clock, say, and be done eating at what would that would be, six, as opposed to breaking your fast at 12 and being done eating by 8 p.m. But in the summertime for me, I've tried the early time restricted eating I feel good in it, but it's a little bit more challenging for me, especially in the summertime when it stays light until late 30. Sometimes I'm walking, I don't get back from my walk until 7, 7.30, and then I wanna be done eating by eight. So I cycle between early and late. Generally in, in the winter time, I can easily do the early time restricted eating. The, typically in the summer, you know, spring a little bit, I, I go back to my traditional late, where I eat between 12 and eight, taking two meals, high in protein. So for example, this guy who's 2,500 calories, he wants, a, he wants an either diet similar to what I do, but probably more calories. I generally don't go 25. 2,500 calories will put me in a positive energy balance. So he would want to take in maybe 65 grams of protein when he's breaking his fast. Say, he, say he's doing late at 12 o'clock. That would be like nine ounces of chicken, fish, and meat. It gets you about 65 grams of protein. Say he would have an avocado like me another 350 calories, he's, he's you, may, you know, maybe he would have a eight, 900 calorie meal, which is very typical to the meals that I post. Mm. Maybe do two meals like that, maybe a little bit more, and then have a protein bar, protein shake in the middle. So 12 o'clock, high protein, high fiber meal, maybe three o'clock, protein bar, protein shake, then maybe 637, similar meal to, um, to lunch. And I'm gonna really try to start posting more dinner time meals because I, I guess I'm showing the same lunch meals over and over again because I eat very similar things for lunch. For dinner, we mix it up. Like last night, I had um, mahi mahi, which is kind of a different fish. We had Brussels sprouts, and we had um, string beans. So, so it was green and green. Typically, we don't do green and green. Generally, I like to go two different colors. Like it would it would have been better to have like cauliflower and then have maybe string beans, so you have a white and a green, and different colors, different vitamins, different minerals, different nutrients, it's like a rainbow. Um, see, my lunches, I want them to be so simple and easy. I've even done a couple of videos. I like the video I did, I think I released it early this week, about how I grilled my chicken. I made this like, just grilled chicken, avocados, and blueberries. I showed you how I cooked it in under 10 minutes. I do a lot of that lunchtime. Dinner, we try to do a little bit more. You know, we try to eat different things and, and, and make it a little bit interesting. I'm just really try, just that it gets dark and then, you know, my wife, my kids, everyone wants to eat and I'll say, ah, I gotta go film my dinner. You know, like, I feel like I can't eat a meal <laughs> without filming it. It's like kind of crazy. It's pretty funny. Okay, this is Chris. Mahi, ma, mahi, mahi is good. 
I tried it for the first. Oh, that's good. Yeah, like yeah, no, Texas is funny. I, I want this Texas. Is is what? what I'm curious because what's the main fish you guys get in Texas? Is it more like the salmon's and the things like that? Like more like the typical ones? Yeah, like my. I mean, my truthfully, I'm not a crazy fan of mahi mahi. Um, my wife loves it. I find it a little dark and a little like chewy ish. But I like to season it differently. Like we season it all differently, you know. So I like the black and I like the Cajun. I like the curry, you know. Th that's why I like to season things. Sometimes just like E V O O and and oregano, more like Italian style, with a little bit of white wine like that. That's how we would do flan and things like that. And I still lean more towards um, pescatarian. I do eat red meat, obviously. I just made my buffalo chili not that long ago. I think I made it. I think last Sunday that was my old mad meal. I think I did a video on that too. I had two bowls of that buffalo chili. Then I have my I always have my avocado and um, blueberries, and you'll see my pictures too. I, I had that sushi, that resistance starch sushi, like about a a month ago, and now I can't stop thinking about it. I had it again this week, but I don't want to do that too often because I don't want to take too much. I still keep an eye on the carbs, and that's the other thing. And, and, and people always ask me this too. When it comes to me, my formulas, I don't really talk about carbs and fat because the key is that if you're eating a whole natural food diet, you're going to get plenty of fat from that. Right, your avocados, your sardines, your whole eggs, your avocado, right? So, you know, I don't really add much fat. I do cook with extra virgin olive oil. I may put a little bit of EVO on my salad, saute my vegetables. And then when it comes to carbs, I just don't eat really pasta, rice, bread, you know, rarely on rare occasion. Actually, it's, it's my sister-in-law's um, birthday today. So I'm going to do my own. I'm going to fast all day. Then when I go over to my brother's house, I'm sure today I will probably have... Um, some bread or something there, because it's kind of like oh, I may even have a piece of cake, you know. But I don't really talk about it as much, even though people say, "Michael, you keto?" Could people look at my meals and they see, they they don't think they see any carbs because you're looking at a piece of salmon on top of an arugula salad, right, with an avocado, blueberries. That like they say, "Mike, where are the carbs? What are you keto?" When you think about, it, there's a reasonable amount of carbs there. It could be 30, 40 grams, which is still low. But there's no bread, there's no pasta, there's no rice, there's no junk food, right? So that's what I mean. So. If you're eating in my style and you actually put all your food into like my fitness pal, I'm sure Chris has done this many times, you're gonna see probably most of your calories might be fat, could be 50%. Not that I, in my mind, I'm not like trying to eat a high fat diet, but you know, salmon is high in fat, uh, sardines are high in fat, whole eggs are high in fat, avocados are high in fat. I, and I'm also eating high protein. And then when you look at the carbs, I'm probably eating 100, 150 grams of carbs a day just coming from, you know, the avocado, even though the net carbs are low, coming from the, the salad, a couple of fruits, some berries. That's like my style of eating. I think it's the way to go. Mm. Let's see, Chris, let's see what Chris said. Oh, let's see. Hi from, oh, from France. Oh my God, that's fantastic. That's great. So thank you so much for showing up. I love that. Actually, we were just, I, know, I don't know, this may have been your first time here, me and my wife. We just got back from, um, we had to go, to go to a a wedding in Italy. We were in Tuscany, Lake, Lake Como. And then my daughter did a semester in Rome a few months ago. I was in Rome for a month. And I've been to France many times. I actually love it. One of the first trips me and my wife ever took. We went to northern Italy, southern France. We went to Cap the Antibes. And it was like incredible. But Paris is my wife's by far. She feels, my wife feels like she, my wife feels like she had another life in Paris. She loves it. She would move there in a second. She would love for us to retire and spend like a lot of time in France or something like that. But that's like a way, a way is off for us. But um, my daughter loved Paris too. I, I like, I love it too. It is, it's such a beautiful place. That's great. Let's see. So this is Jeff. A uh, bass and catfish, really. Texas, that's, it's catfish. I like catfish. I haven't seen, it hasn't been coming around in New York lately, catfish. But I love like black and catfish. That's interesting. Let's see, Chris. Yes, we have salmon, catfish. Yes, yeah, see, oh, I love sea bass too. That's a big one. And my uh, tilapia, uh, tilapia. Yeah, we, I get a lot of tilapia too. That's a nice light white fish. We eat that a lot too, and it's good. A good price in New York. It's a really affordable tilapia, which I like too. I'm gonna look. I'm, I'm in the mood to have some catfish. I gotta see if it's around. And we eat a ton of salmon. I try to go wild caught whenever I can but sometimes I don't even sometimes I buy um, the farm if it's from if it's you know I like I think as I like certain certain places where they do the farm I think they do it better like in, I think Scotland is a good place for the farm and um, I love you know I love fish I do I eat a ton of fish and I try to go low on, on, on the uh, you know try to keep the mercury down like low on the food chain that's why I love the sardine so much
Okay, so this is the general, my favorite, like I said, my favorite time restricted eating plan. I know this might be a review for a lot of you guys who show up every week. You know, 16-8, fast for 16 hours. I may still squeeze my lemon, lemon, uh, half a lemon in a Pellegrino water in the morning. I don't think that breaks a fast. Some people technically say it will. Maybe there's two, three calories in half a lemon. But I like the lemon juice. I think it's a really good thing. I feel good for me. A little vitamin C, I love it. It even, it even, some studies have shown it even lowers blood sugar. Taking some lemon juice, plus a great way to hydrate. Almost like an electrolyte-ish drink in a way. Then I'll have, lately I've been drinking espresso. I'll have my two black espressos. I go right out, take my walk first thing in the morning in a fastest day, love it. And then I follow this like two mad protein bar, protein shake, 16 8, break my fast at 12. So if you have this guy who's 250, who wants to weigh 200, let's go over like a typical, typical like two days. So you wake up, if you if you can, we're gonna get to a little exercise section on a couple of a couple of next slides, but if you can really, if you can take that 20, 30 minute walk first thing in the morning, it will be life changing for you. First of all, there's the mental clarity and, and for mental health, it's like incredible. Plus it sets your circadian rhythm, getting that early morning sunlight. You're doing it on an empty stomach. So the percentage of calories burned are gonna be greater because you're on an empty stomach. You know, it, it gets a little, you know, fasted, fasted cardio in general is a little debatable because research shows that when you're doing the, the exercise, yes, you burn a greater percentage of fat calories, but then the respiratory exchange ratio kind of flips later in the day where maybe you'll burn more carbs. But if you're eating this moderate carb diet, all, all, so many physique athletes do it. I do it. I love it. You take that 30 minute walk, right? Say it's, it's a day where you're having 2,500 calories. So then you stay hydrated, right? You drink your coffee. Even coffee has two, three calories in it, a cup of coffee. You break your fast at 12 o'clock, high protein. You try to take in 65 grams of protein, which would be like nine, 10 ounces of a salmon, you know, lean red meat, maybe grilled chicken, you know, whatever. It could be leftovers from the night before. Then you maybe you have like typical meat, you have a big arugula salad, which is almost three calories. Maybe you get 30, 40 calories there. You throw an avocado, which is 350 calories in it, right? You want to maybe have some other vegetables, you cut up some peppers, blah, blah, blah. You know, you maybe have an eight, 900 calorie meal, right? There, a little EVO, balsamic vinegar, maybe you had, you maybe you give yourself one row of dark chocolate, like, like I might do, which is 90 calories. Say you take in, you know, 900, 950 calories, and you're avoiding the processed food, you're avoiding the cookies, the cake, the junk, right? Then around three o'clock, let's say that this day, you, you don't have the time, you grab a Quest protein bar, 210 calories, you, you, you get another like 15 grams of fiber. So from the avocado and the Quest Bar, you already got 30, 40 grams of fiber already, 35 for the day, which is incredible, right? That's another 210 calories. So your calorie count now is somewhere maybe 12, 1300, depending upon how much maybe extra virgin olive oil you used and the kind of the size of the fish or the size of the avocado, hard to get it exactly. And then dinner, you know, same thing. Maybe you have, if you had fish for, for lunch, maybe for dinner you're gonna you're gonna do chicken. Maybe you have chicken thighs like I love. We bake chicken thighs all the time. If you keep the skin on them, yes, the calories would be a little bit higher. So maybe you take in, you have three or four chicken thighs. You have a big thing of broccoli with EVO on it. If you're having broccoli, then you want to pick a different color vegetable. You have yellow squash or some something like that. That you have like another eight nine hundred calorie meal. If you're on your 2,000 calorie day, you're probably done. You're probably at 2,000. If you're on your 2,500 calorie day, maybe you want to give yourself a little treat after dinner. Have a little something that's two, 300 calories to bump you up to 2,500. And that's like the perfect typical day. We didn't talk about the exercise, so you only walked in the morning. If you've if you got a treadmill in your house and then you can walk after dinner, then you're blowing it out of the park. Because those, those sh like you take a 20 minute walk on the treadmill after you eat, and it's going to, um, can help low blood sugar. Plus, I didn't talk about alcohol too. If, you, if you're a wine drinker or maybe you have one beer on the days when you, you allow those extra calories, you know, you can have, you know, instead of having a treat, you can have a glass of wine after dinner or before dinner, you know, something like that just to get the calories, you know, keep your calories in line. That, that's a nice thing too, and it minimizes your alcohol. I'm tough, I'm, I messed up one day on my 30 day um, alcohol free challenge, but I'm, I'm back on track. I, I had one day where I had one of those premium, um, light beers, 90 calories, 2.8 grams of carbs, and I had one glass of wine. But but um, I started on the 26th, so I'm getting close to the end. I don't, I don't know, I, I wanna, I'm gonna do a whole video about not drinking for, for like 30 days. I'll, I'll, it'll be fun to talk about it. But that's a fun thing I find new to, to, uh, to do too on the days that you cycle. 
on the 2500 calorie day, maybe you have a glass of wine, right? But on the 2000 calorie day, you don't know. Maybe on, now you have a light beer on your, on your upper calorie day. It also keeps the alcohol in and out too, which is really nice. But this is my favorite strategy. I think we got a bunch of questions. Let, let, let me go back. Oh, Alexander gave us, um, Alexander gave me a super chat. Oh, thanks so much, Alexander. She gives me super chat every week, which is so nice of her. Okay, this is Alexandra, okay. She does not eat enough protein, and she's talking about her grandmother. If you just came to the live stream, Ale Alexandra's grandmother, she thinks she weighs about 160 60 pounds, she's 75 years old. Alexandra wanted to know if she, if she should add a uh, protein shake to um, her diet. I think it's a good idea, but I would just want to make sure she's getting enough protein in general. She does not eat enough protein, and she's not going to change her diet. That's why... That's why I need a quick fix like a protein shake. And you know, I think that, I think that's great. And you know, the, these new protein powders taste so good. And I think I mentioned my favorite one, Garden of Life, that whey protein, that grass-fed whey protein. It tastes great. The chocolate, I, I go chocolate vanilla. I love the taste. It does have a little bit of sugar, alcohol, that ethyl, but I, it's not in crazy amounts. I love it. Even even her, truthfully, I think she can even do those ensures. You know those those drinkable protein drinks, the high protein ones. They taste great. They taste like taste like milkshakes. I mean, she can easily do that, and I think she can even do. And the fiber would probably be good for her. Those Quest protein bars, like I just talked about, two hundred ten calories, twenty one grams of protein right there. She can do the those no cow bars. I think taste pretty good too. A little chalky, but I personally like them. <clears throat> if you want to minimize dairy, I would find her some protein bars that really work for her. You can give her. She can get out twenty grams of protein. She can eat two of them a day, even you know protein bar, protein shake. See if she likes chocolate or vanilla. It's they're a little expensive. The um, the Garden of Life. I see ranges. The price ranges all over the place. At Whole Foods, it's like fifty dollars, but you get like twenty servings. You can get it online. They'll for a lot less. Like I've seen online thirty, thirty-two dollars, something like that. I think that'd be great for Alexandra, definitely. Hey, retired two nineteen. Thanks for showing up. That's cool. Okay, here we go. I'm sixty, with twenty-seven percent body fat. What would like? Um. Okay, I'm sixty with twenty-seven percent. Okay, I'm sixty with twenty-seven percent. I'm. I'm. But the context, I'm having a little hard time reading it. I'm sixty with twenty-seven percent body fat. What would would like to get to twenty percent? Any suggestions? Okay, let me let me just calculate some money for you. I would follow this exact program that I'm talking about. If you, I mean, if you want, if you want to tell me your weight, I'll probably give you exact numbers. But I would do this. I would take your body weight, just like I talked about. I would multiply that by ten. So if you're two hundred pounds, eat two thousand calories one day, then pick your goal weight. I know with the with the percentage of body fat. You can figure it out mathematically and see what your goal weight is if you want to get down there. Then I would I would eat that many calories day two. I would keep your protein high and, and I would pretty much do exactly what I'm talking about here, but just adjust your numbers to you to your size. I started eating an avocado every day. Thanks, oh that's great. Hey, thanks for showing up. This is great. What's another superfood like avocados? I eat avocado, but don't really like the taste. Yes, I get a lot of questions like that. Unfortunately, I shouldn't say that. Unfortunately, I, to me, I, I think it's a superfood because you're just getting so, you're getting about 900 milligrams of potassium, 15, 16 grams of fiber, and I like those monounsaturated fats. I find them so satisfying. But I would say, if you don't like them, don't eat them. But you have to go with you have to get the fiber. I would probably replace them with two different colored vegetables. It just requires a little bit more work. That's why I love it for lunch. And you're not going to get the fat. And actually, avocados are fruit, but it's really like kind of like a vegetable. It's a low glycemic fruit, obviously. I would just go with broccoli, cauliflower. I would just load up with the vegetables without upsetting your stomach. See, I find the avocado so palatable. Maybe though, sometimes I tell people to do this. Maybe you can just season the avocado in a way that makes it a lot more enjoyable. Like that's why people think I, I was crazy when I started doing this, but I think blueberries and avocado go so good together. And you can easily take a spoonful of an avocado with a blueberry, you know, and eat it at the same time. You can salt it. You can put a little EVO on it. You can even put different, you know, you can Cajun it up, right? You can blacken it. You can even put, you know, the my kids love that that everything bagel spice. I'm not crazy about that, but my kids love it. You can put curry on it. You know, I, not that you necessarily want to disguise it, but it is somewhat hard to replace an avocado for the satiety. Like to me. 
say an avocado is 350 calories. You get 15, 16 grams of fiber, and you get a bunch of, I mean, most of the calories that come from the monounsaturated fat, which I think is the healthiest fat, like similar to an olive, you know, like an olive oil type fat. When you're eating the vegetables by themselves, you will get the fiber, not even as much. You gotta eat a lot of broccoli to get 15, 16 grams of fiber, but you're not getting any of the fat. But if you're doing the broccoli and say, you know, the cauliflower, you're doing the broccoli and say you're having some red beets, it's like two different colors, but you're having like salmon or sardines or you're having red meat, or you're having the chicken thighs, you're getting the fat there, so you don't necessarily have to have it from the avocado. But it's hard to replace an avocado, unfortunately. Something, too, you can throw some maybe some walnuts, some, I like pistachios, macadamia nuts, along with your vegetables like lunch, just to increase the healthy fat content of the meal, too, which is really satisfying. I find nuts to be incredibly satisfying. One Brazil nut, you get all your selenium for the whole day, and people are low in selenium, generally. But it's a hard one. Oh, thanks, Chris. Chris, another guy who's old. Chris and Alexander always give me super chats every week. Thanks so much, Chris. And Chris, oh, I, I know I thank you on Instagram, but Chris was like incredibly nice for me. Like I'm, I've been working on this thing for weeks, this new online coaching program that I'm going to launch. I don't know, maybe it's going to still be a few more weeks away, maybe a month or two away. And I needed some before and after pictures, and Chris sent me some incredible before and after pictures. He's lost like 68 pounds with me, which I'm so happy. The pictures are amazing. It's and it's going to help me, you know, get the word out for this for my online coaching program, which I really, really appreciate, Chris. Now let's see, let's see Chris's question. Okay, thank you for doing these Sunday sessions. You have helped me and my wife tremendously. Yeah, Chris, is, she's, he sent me pictures uh, before and after pictures of his wife too, which were mind blowing. How well she's done. She's done as well as him. It's incredible. I'm so happy for them. You've you've helped me and my wife tremendously. Down seventy pounds. Unreal, Chris. Just you're killing it. The walk protocol you gave me is working well. Yeah, that's great. I love the walking. Essentially, it took me like so many years. And now that I'm all like, like I'm, I'm going to be turning 61, that's, I, I may do a little live stream next Sunday about me turning 61 and how I messed up last year. I'll, I'll get back to your question, Chris. I messed up last year. What I typically do every year before my birthday is um, like I, I increase my intensity of the workout and I cut back on my diet. I try to look good. And take a picture of myself on my 61st, um, uh, you know, on my birthday. And the last few years I've been messing up. Last year, I started. I increased the intensity of my workout so hard, so quickly, and so hard. I hurt my elbows. I got tendonitis in both elbows. That took until now to pretty much go away. I mean, it took like 10, 11 months to go away. What healed my elbows is that blood flow restriction training. You know, when I put the tourniquets on my arms and I'm able to, like, you know, pump my pump up with like really light weights. I normally would curl like 40, 45 pound dumbbells. I can use like a 15 pound, 10 pound dumbbell, high reps with these bands and just blow my arms up. And that really helped heal my elbows. My elbows are feeling so much better. They're still not 100%, but they're like 80% better. So maybe next thing I'll talk about, I, I may do a little bit of a push just for the next maybe six weeks because my birthday is the end of August to look a little bit better. but. Yeah, the walking protocol, I just absolutely love it. I mean, the two workers that, that I like, I think Chris is doing now, is that, is that short, high intensity, you know, maybe twice a week, those interval workouts where you spike your heart rate really high for a minute. I only do five or six intervals. And then the long base building, 170 minus your age. And Chris, I think he doesn't go above 115 beats per minute. I love it. I think it's, that's why I, that, you know, that, that's why I fell off track. You know, it took me years to appreciate the long base building workouts. You know, when you're in your 20s and 30s, you know, you figure harder is always better, long is always better. You get that buzz from working out the endorphins when you work out hard. Like, you, I remember years ago, I'd take a walk. I wouldn't even think it was exercise. I mean, when I'm, I'm walking, right? Completely different. You have to base build. Those are the two type of aerobic workouts you have to do. You have to do that short, high intensity, not that long. It could be 15, could be 12 minutes, could be four or five 30 second intervals, really hard, right? But you need the base build. For so, you have to do those like 45 minutes or 30, 45, 60 minute walks with a low heart rate. You're burning a great percent of fat calories. You're truly in your aerobic zone where you're really fueling everything with oxygen. You're burning fat. You become a fat burner. You take those, you take 170 minus your age, whatever your heart rate is. In my case, I'm 60. 170 minus 60 is 110. Most of all my walks, my heart rate's below 110. 
because I want to build that aerobic base. I want to be a good fat burner. Plus, it's great, like I always say, it's so good for your mental health. I pretty much keep myself sane <laughs> from walking in the morning or walking later in the day, just like it's a, cr it's a crummy day in New York today. It's raining all day. And I, I, I didn't even jump on the treadmill this morning because my daughter is, um, is getting an apartment it's getting into a part we had to submit all these forms and you know for the applications we i got a little and i was doing this um obviously the live stream with the slides so i didn't but i'm gonna walk right after this i'll walk on the treadmill it, it's walking and i'll do my baseball i'll walk 45 minutes maybe in an hour and the great thing about the treadmill is you can put your hands on there you know, i'll make sure with the incline that i don't go above 110 and i talked about it we talked about this last week but it's such a good thing to mention this is the phil, the phil maffetone method where i love this system where you take 170 minus your age and let's say that I'm on the treadmill and I'm monitoring my heart rate either with one of those heart rate monitors or I'm grabbing the handles and sometimes I just take my pulse for 20 seconds. Do always do a zero for the first beat, 20 seconds, you multiply it by three, right? So if you get 30 seconds and your heart rate's 90, right? If you get 40 seconds, you're 120. So I don't want my heart rate to go above 110, but I'll go with like 45 minutes on the treadmill. And if I want to improve my aerob aerobic base, like really improve my uh, like aerobic capacity, I don't know if capacity is the right word, my aerobic ability, I'm going to keep on trying to cover more and more ground within that 45 minutes. So say typically I would walk, say 2 point, I'm making this up, say 2.2 miles within that 45 minute period without my heart rate going above 110. But it's like if it goes above 110, I slow down or I reduce the incline. The whole idea is you want to build the aerobic base. So now I want to try to cover more ground without my heart rate going up, which shows I'm more aerobically fit. So instead of doing 2.2 miles within 45 minutes, I want to do 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, which is showing that I'm either walking faster or I'm using a higher incline. But my heart is saying, well, you, I can totally handle this. I'm above, I'm below 110. That's how you build that low end aerobic base. It's so good, so important. And then you also want the VO2 max, like we were saying, right? You want that high intensity, the maximal oxygen consumption. But those VO2 max workouts, it's like, like I said last time, it's like anaerobic threshold. You know, you're right on the edge where you're kind of like building lactate and, and you know hydrogen and your legs can almost be burning and you, you know it's almost like lifting weights to some degree when you're doing those high intervals but you need a both you need to do something to increase your VO2 max even the base building will increase your VO2 max too but then you really want that a true aerobic training see most people unfortunately and I did this for decades too would work in that middle zone and Mark Sesson he coined the phrase I think it's a great phrase he coined the phrase the phrase chronic cardio. And Mark says is the guy I always bring up. He wrote that first book, The Primal Blueprint, New York Times bestselling author. He wrote multiple books, Primal Endurance, which is a great book explaining all this. Then he wrote the, key, um, the Keto Reset book. He wrote that book. And then he wrote a book that I didn't read yet, but I want to read it, Two Meals a Day, Too Mad, which is very similar to me. And he, t he coined that phrase chronic cardio where people who like are above that base building range, like say, a guy my age is 160. My max heart rate is, is 160. People who would train like at that 140, you know, that steady state cardio, kind of kind of high, maybe 75, 80% of their maximum heart rate in that middle zone and do, doing it chronically. It, like it wears you down. You know, it's not like just doing like a 20 minute hit interval workout, a 15 minute hit interval workout. People stay there for 45 minutes an hour. They go to a spinning class and they just like brutalize themselves. It wears you down, and I think it's, he even talks about there's a correlation with AFib, irregular heart rate. He's got AFib because he was a world-class endurance runner. So not that that steady state is, is all bad. I mean, I do some of it, but I wouldn't do what typically most people do when they go to a gym, when they go on an aerobic piece of equipment. They just hang out, and they just like kind of brutalize themselves at like 80, 85% of their max heart rate and hang out there for 45 minutes to an hour. It, first of all, it makes you starving because you're depleting so many carbohydrates from something. It breaks you down and wears you down. I mean, you can do it once or twice a week, but most people go to the gym, they jump right on, on uh, the treadmill or the bike or the, uh, the, you know, one of the, I just spent 45 minutes sweating up a storm and, and they just breaking themselves down. A little bit of it's okay, but I prefer short, hard, long, easy. You're getting the best of both worlds as opposed to being in the middle. I hope you under, hope I explained that well. Okay, let's see. 
Hey, Brooks, thanks for showing up. Thank you for sharing. I'm learning more each day as you share. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks for showing up. That's great. Here's Chris. Okay. I bought the Garden of Life vanilla flavor, 36. Ooh, that's good. At Herb, Herb in Texas. That's a good price, Chris. I'm glad to get that. I can't get that in New York for a price like that. And sometimes even on Amazon, I can find it like that, maybe even a teeny bit less. But sometimes I get it and the date's not great. It's not a, it didn't expire, but I like when you buy them, you know. I, my wife got me into this. If, if I bring home something where I didn't check the date in my house, I'm in trouble. You know, like the yogurts and eggs and anything. I, I got to get the best date or my wife won't eat it. You know, so sometimes that's the that's the thing on Amazon. You gotta be a little careful. Is to make sure you're getting like a fresh batch. I like I like to try to get a fresh batch if I can. But that's a good price. Retire two nineteen, Mike. I also walk twelve thousand steps a day. Love it. Strength train three times a week. You're killing it. Retire twenty nineteen. I, I love it. You're doing great. You just you know follow the diet recommendations here. You know cut back on the calories, get the protein up, and you can and even two three to what your twenty six percent is probably pretty good. <laughs> But it'd be nice to get down to it, down a little bit. Why not? Here's Gwen. Gwen, okay. Try, uh, uh, okay, trying, trying to get that 100 grams of protein, chicken, turkey, ham, eggs, fish. What else is high in protein? Okay, you got most of them here. So you got all the animal protein. I would say, I always talk about the, um, the Greek yogurt. I love the Greek yogurt because it's so um, protein dense compared to just a plain yogurt. A plain yogurt, could be like 120 calories, five, six grams of protein. Like a Greek yogurt is more concentrated. So you can, if you get the no fat, 80 calories, 30, 15 grams of protein. If you had two, you're getting like for 160 calories, you're getting 30 grams of protein. That's one of the lowest calorie, leanest forms of getting protein and really an expensive way of doing it too. Plus you're getting the calcium and I think it's good to have dairy like that. I typically go with the 2% or 5%. So instead of 80 calories, I think the 2% goes to maybe like 100, maybe the 5% is 120, but it's still 15 grams of protein. I love it. I can eat too many of them. Sometimes I'll do, I always like, if I'm ever having a meal that's light on protein, like say I'm just having a can of sardines because I, I had nothing else in the house that day, which is 21 grams of protein there. And you always pick up protein from the avocado or from the vegetables. You pick up a few grams there. So say I'm at 25. But I said that's too low for me. I, so maybe I'll have a Greek yogurt. Brings me up to at least brings me up to forty. Or sometimes for dessert, after dinner, I'll have a Greek yogurt with some blueberries on it thrown in there. Cause I don't want to have ice cream or something like that. You know, maybe my kids will be my daughter will have ice cream. I'll have a Greek yogurt with some blueberries. Maybe I'll even sprinkle a little bit of ground flaxseed on top of the yogurt. I like that. I love. I can eat two or three Greek yogurts a day. I try not to have more than one. And then some days I miss. But I, I think Greek yogurt's another thing. Also, like we say, Gwen, the protein powders I think are great. It, whether it's a whey protein or a plant-based protein, whatever protein patty you like, you know you don't have to, you know you don't have to do the Garden of Life. That's probably the, one of the more expensive ones. There are other ones that are less expensive that I think are really good too. And like I said, the protein bars I think are great. The Quest, the No Cow. But when you go with the protein bar, go with the high fiber protein bars. Like I talk, that's why I like Quest and No Cow because the net carbs are so low, and it's like eating an avocado fiber wise, you know, which is great. Hey, retire two nineteen. Thanks so much for the super chat. Really nice of you, Mike. Uh, Mike, your channel is awesome. Thanks for helping us get healthy. Oh, I really appreciate. It. That's so nice of you. That's great. Thanks so much. Okay, so we got the man from France. Let's see, seven thirty p.m. here. Whoa, I, I, that's right, six hours ahead, right? Having my OMAD dinner. Just so you're doing like me, uh, OMAD on Sundays. Lost thirteen kilograms. Wow, that's this. I saw that's almost thirty pounds. Like two point two times thirteen. That's 20, oh my God, that's about close to 30 pounds. Thanks again for your good work and hello, I, 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 that's wonderful. I'm curious to know, you're doing OMAD every day or you just do it on Sundays? I'm curious to know, you're doing it intermittently. That's great. Really, really cool. All right, so, so there, there, there's my, you know, the breakdown of, um, let's see, well, I don't even know what slide I have there. After being in a calorie, okay. Right, let's talk about the diet breaks. This is the diet break slide. And this is another thing that some people don't want to do it, but I have to say when most people do do it, they're really glad they did down the road. But first of all, I, I find that most people will just stick to the diet better knowing that they, they've dug in for six weeks. Psychologically, mentally, they need a break. The only time I, w I get a little concerned, and this has happened over the years for sure, is that some people take a diet break and never come back. Like you have to know yourself. You're the type of person that, that if, you, if you increase your calories to say 15 times your body weight and you think you're never going to be able to go back, then I don't think you should do it. Then I would want you to do a little bit more of an intermittent 
diet break. But typically, like say you're doing the program I just described, at the end of six weeks, you should be considerably lighter. Take a week off or so, maybe even two. Go to maintenance calories. You may gain a little bit of water weight because you're probably going to fill up your muscles with glycogen, and then you c come right off it. But if you're the type that you know that, okay, Mike, if I start increasing my calories for two weeks, I'm, I'll never go back, then I probably want you to just do intermittent diet breaks, meaning like, you know, like kind of like cheat days. I don't mind the term cheat days. Some people don't like it, meaning that you're, you're following this routine, and then maybe Saturday night is just a high-calorie day for you. So one day a week, you go to maintenance calories, you're eating an extra five, six, seven hundred, you're eating an extra thousand calories even, like on a Saturday night, so you're having like one cheat day. And that's kind of, in a way, taking a diet break. So it's like, it's like kind of like an up metabolism day. And then psychologically, it keeps you going. But typically, I like the six week thing, because I like people to stick to routine and see great results in six weeks and then just take a break. Let's see, okay, let's get it. And then this, this is, I would say, would be like the minimum workout routine. I know this is a little bit more of a diet thing, but even if you, I, I would want you to do more if you have the time, but if you just want to just focus on your diet, like for the next six months, lose that 50 pounds, maintain your muscle mass by just doing a little bit of resistance training, I think this is a good approach. Like I said, you'll walk that 30 to 60 minutes a day. I'd rather you do two, two 30 minute walks as opposed to 160, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes either before or after dinner. If you can do the first walk in that fasted state, right? And then the simplest resistance training exercises, maybe spend 20 minutes twice a week, and I think you can maintain your muscle mass with that. Maybe two, I, and, and I picked these exercises because you can go one, two, three, and, re and keep on repeating the cycle. So you do a set of body weight squats, you work up to 20 repetitions. If that starts getting easy, if you can grab some dumbbells if you have in your house and hold the dumbbells, you can hold 20, 30, 40 pound dumbbells depending upon how strong you are. Then you do your push-ups, you try to get up to like 20, 25 push-ups. Then you try to hold a plank for 30 seconds, for I say 60 seconds, 90 seconds of a plank. Maybe you initially start with just one round of that, you only take it like, what's that, seven, eight minutes, but then work up to like three rounds of push-ups, push-ups, I mean a body weight squ squats, push-ups and planks. Try to do three rounds of that. Should take you less than 20 minutes. Great way to maintain your muscle mass when you're losing weight. Couldn't be simpler. I would like you to do it like Chris. I know Chris is going to the gym. I would love you to do a little bit more, but that's the, you know, it doesn't require anything. You can even just do like, if the body weight squats get too easy and you don't have dumbbells, you can do lunges, like body weight lunges. It'd be like a one-legged squat. And I have a lot of these videos on my, on, on my YouTube channel. I know, you know, you can just Google it on YouTube. But that's it, I mean, that's the routine. And okay, let's pull up some, um, I didn't do too many meals. I don't think this time. Let me see where I have my meals here. Unless I lost them. It's, it's interesting. Sometimes with the software, I don't know why that is. I've been losing my, um, that happened last time too. I lost my meals. But I know, I know where they are. I can pull them. I'll pull them up right from, because um, I, I loaded them this morning. Let's see. I, I know I had my sushi. Let's see where my meals are. Okay, here are the meals. I you know I did my typical, I think my typical sardine and, um, I think I did a video on this. I did a video on this. Let's see if I can shrink this down. Let me see how I can shrink it. Uh oh, sorry guys. There we go. So this is my typical. You know, this is how I eat, and this, this is what I mean by eating a similar thing for lunch. What I like about this meal is that everything was, you know, there was no cooking involved. So we have the arugula salad, which is packaged, right? Two hard-boiled eggs, which gave me maybe 14 grams of um, protein, 21 grams with the can of sardines, which got me 21, what's 20, 21, that's 31, so about 35. I'm sure I didn't show a picture of it, I'm sure this is a day, because this is only about 35 grams of protein. This is a day where I'm almost sure I would have a Greek yogurt for dessert at the end of this meal, because I want to pop the meal up to a minimum of 50. So if I had a Greek yogurt, this brings it over 50, 55 grams, because you always pick up, like I said, a little bit of protein from the avocado and from the arugula. Small amounts, maybe two, three grams. Let's see what Chris got. Oh, Chris, hey, another, another super chat from Chris. Thanks so much, Chris. Really nice of you. This is Chris. Thank you for doing the Instagram lives during the week. The lives help me stay on track and keeps me accountable. Great community here. Love you guys. Oh, that's so great, Chris. Yeah, I've been doing, I'm going to start going live on Instagram every day, like at least once. It seems like all the guys with the big followings do that. I like that. I like doing it for myself, too, because it keeps me, like, motivated, because I, 
you know, you, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta do what you say. You know what I mean? Like I, I, it makes me take my walk, and I say, hey, I just get back to my walk. I, I just, sometimes I feel I'm like too casual, but like I should just do that because I like to do like what I did today. Like I prepare the slides, I try to have a, like a whole game plan. But I guess when you're going live on Instagram every day, it could be just more. You just talk about like what's going on, what you're doing that day, besides having like a specific theme. So that's good. Okay, so this is like an example, but but eventually the software that I'm using now, this is called like Ecamm Live. I should be able to soon have the capabilities of going live on Instagram using this software, and then it'll be great. And then I can do these Instagram things and like pull pictures in and and all things like that, which I would love. Okay, so let's see. Let, let's see. That I know I have that sushi meal. Let me see where that is. You've seen me pull this up before, but I had to, I had this again this week. Maybe I'm having it a little too often. I just absolutely love it. But this is a little a little heavier on the carb. I have my sushi, avocado, and uh, this I definitely would have a Greek, a Greek yogurt with too. Because this is probably only maybe four ounces of sushi here, which would only be 25 grams of protein. Sometimes I'll even throw a whole piece of salmon on there too and have that with it. And and you know my my deal with this, I, I refrigerate the sushi the day before. To make it a resistant starch, so I don't digest the calories as much in the white rice. It becomes a little more like a fiber type thing. But I, I, I have to stop doing this because it's almost like a trigger food for me. We talked about my trigger foods before. These are foods that once you start eating them, you can't stop. Like if I have pasta just once, I want it every day. Like I say, potato chips, I can't keep in my house. But this sushi thing too, and you know, the Italian deli, why well, buy all my stuff, which is great. They've got these, they got these sushi guys that are so good in there now. So. I didn't even want to walk by that section. And it's on the perimeter, you know, like at supermarkets, all the healthy food is on the perimeter. Like you got your produce on the right, you know, you got your eggs and, and milk and, and cheese and stuff in the back. And then in this supermarket, the whole left is the fish the, the fishmonger and the, you know, the, the, the meat and the chicken, the poultry. But unfortunately they got the sushi guy right in my run. Like I'm, I, you know, I, I'm on the outside of, a, of this, grocery store and it's right in my face you know that's why I don't like going down the mid middle like I don't like walking down the, the potato chip aisle because I feel like grabbing it's funny this particular market they really know for beer too have an incredible beer selection and they always put the beer with the food that goes with like the potato chips and the pretzels I try not, not to go down that aisle you know at all but I love this I mean but I don't I don't do it too often let's see I think we got um let's see you know, uh, Mike, do you eat steak? Yes, I eat steak, absolutely. You know, maybe every couple of weeks. I don't really do red meat. Um, do I do it every week? Probably not. I love my buffalo, my bison chili, which I just recently made because I did, I did, I, that was my all mad, I think, last Sunday. And when I make it, I make it with three pounds. I have the recipe on the YouTube channel too. I make it with three pounds of bison. So that'll last me a few days. It'll probably last me three days. So typically, if I do that, Say I do that once a month, or maybe once every six weeks. I eat a lot of I eat a lot of meat, not steak, but a lot of buffalo because I'll eat it three days in a row because I don't want to waste it. So I'll have it on Sunday as my all mad meal. Then maybe I'll eat it for lunch Monday, Tuesday. You know, along with an avocado and some fiber top. And I do it like pretty low on carbs. My recipe, typically that recipe would, would require uh, require like two cans of beans. I make it with half a can of beans. And I use I use like seven green peppers and maybe two onions, and a lot of the I, I love it. It comes out great. And I, but I do put a can of beer like a like a tall boy, of like a lager. And the other alcohol burns off obviously, but getting a little carb there from the beer. It's great. It's a great recipe. I love it. I mean, look it up. It's, I think the title of it is my favorite comfort meal. Like, could I make it in the winter more? And then red meat steak. You know, uh, every couple of weeks maybe I'll have steak for lunch. So maybe in, in the course of a month, depending upon that buffalo chili, maybe I'll average once every two weeks or something like that for red meat. You know, I have tons of fish every day, a lot of chicken. I eat tons of eggs. Hey, Gwen, this Gwen. Um, I love sushi. Does it go? I got protein too. <laughs> Great. Oh, hey, Sue. Hey, Sue. Let's see. What supermarket do you? I'm talking about the Chico, Susan. I don't know. Is the Chico's that where you are? They're in um. It's right in my house. They're all over though. It's like two brothers own it. I think the brothers split up. So there's two, there's the Chicos, but the 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 both brothers run them a little differently. The the ones that are near me, I love. There's one in Alma too, which I love that one. There there may be more, a little bit more north than Westchester. I'm not sure. There may, you know, you know what? I think there is one in Scarsdale. 
I think they. I think if the chicos went into it went into that right in the village, I think there's the chicos there that might be close to you. Mm. I mean, great, great. They're so nice there too. They must be great people to work for because all the kids that um that work there, all the young people that work there, are so nice. I mean, every everyone's nice. Like, does I eat an avocado every day? They all know me there. Sometimes all the avocados are like hard. So I asked one of the guys, they go in the back, they bring me out a, a, a ripe one. The guacamole is incredible today. That's what I'm bringing over to, I'll probably bring it over to my brother today, some guacamole they make there. Everything's ex expensive there though, but it's all, like when it comes to the produce, you, you know, you know, you go over in a great place where you don't have to look, you know, every apple's a good apple. Like every pear is a perfect pear. You know, great. I get my arugula there, all my stuff there. Susan. I was there and I'm like, today, oh, that's great. So I know what you mean about sushi. Yeah, I know. They have really good sushi people. The Yarmulk stores are good. That's the main one I go to. I go to the Yarmulk one all the time. I bought, I bought a tail. That's funny. I wonder if you bought the same one. The same one I have, the salmon and, and uh, but if you can do that refrigerating thing, Sue, try it. I don't know if you're going to eat it today. You may be eating it already, but next time when you buy it, put it in the refrigerator overnight. And I think we talked about this before. The rice really does change. It's a little debatable. But I've seen guys do, who do those, um, who wear those 24-hour glucose monitors, test it with with like the like the cold white rice, and it and it worked. It really worked. I mean, like one day they had the white rice when it was warm, they got a big blood sugar spike. Then they refrigerated it for 24 hours, did the same test, and like two hours later or 45 minutes later, I forget what, where, I forget how they do it. They had a spike in blood sugar, but nowhere near as high. So I do think there's something to something to it to it for sure. This is Jeff. Gwen, sushi has protein if it's got meat in it. But oh, that's what you meant by that question, Gwen. Go, Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, because it has the salmon in it. You know, the salmon is, is is the meat in the sushi. I went there. All right, cool, cool. I think I had one more meal. Let me just pull one more meal because I know I pulled a few. And then we'll wind this thing down, take any other, other questions. I think I had one more. I don't know why that's happening where I'm losing, I'm losing the meals here. But I know I had one more in here. Let's see, what was the other one I had? I mean, oh yeah, which is a, 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 a little boring. It's just my, my my typical um, like I'm talking about my, my my same story, just salmon. I think I made a video of this, where you know when I make my salmon, I make it all different ways. But I think I did a video showing how to make salmon like that. That's like a nine ounce piece of salmon, and I make it right on top of the stove. It's so easy. I just hit it. I put EVO in the pan, spin the salmon. I use curry spices this particular time, a little salt, a little garlic powder, low heat, and all I, I just put one of those, and I use a um, ironclad, and I just put the, the top on it. In 10 minutes, it's like perfect. Sometimes it even has a little bit of pinkness in the center. It comes out great. And I keep the skin on the bottom of it. I don't like to eat the skin, you know, it's kind of, kind of fishy tasting. So when you take it out, I just scoop right underneath it. You know, the skin stays in the pan, put it right on top. And the key though, because I'm, I'm a stickler for this of cleaning pans, you have to clean the pan, and I'm not a chef, but you have to clean the pan when it's hot. So I take the hot pan, a little water, it comes clean in like seconds. But if you don't, it's like cement, you know, the skin of the salmon the next day, if you try to clean it. You know, you gotta clean your pots right after when they're hot, right after you cook. When I do all my things, even when I'm grilling my chicken and all that stuff, or even though I make those little steaks, gotta clean the pot right then. And it comes out great. Okay, this is um. Okay, this is Susan. I went there for a cosmic bliss ice cream. I don't. Even, I'm not familiar with that one. They have both grass-fed and vegan, organic, and they use coconut sugar and not cane sugar. Oh, cool. I have to get that for my daughter. I'm sure she would love that. Cosmic bliss. Great name too, right? If I'm going to snack, it has to be healthy. The healthy version. That sounds good. Sounds great too. All right, guys, gals. Any questions? How long we've we been going? I don't know, hour, hour 13, hour 15, good. I'm gonna, I, I think I'm gonna have to go to my daughter's, I mean my, like I'm saying, my brother's for, for my sister Lord's birthday, so I just wanna make sure I get a good walk in before I go. I'm gonna go in the trim, I think we gotta be there at five, so I got a little bit of time. All right, in the, fro oh, in the frozen section. Okay, that sounds good. So not the ice cream section, you say the frozen section, I'll find, I'll ask them, cosmic bliss, that sounds great. All right guys, any other questions from anybody? Before I go, I'll give you a minute. I know there's a little bit of a delay. And then maybe next Sunday I'll do that. I'll talk about how I'm going to just maybe kick up my um, my workout and like die just a little bit for the next five, six weeks, you know, for when I turn 61. 
I'll, I'll let you guys know what I'm doing. Yes, the frozen ice cream. Here's Alexandra. Um, so is 30 minutes of resistance training exercise three times a week enough? Yes, I absolutely think it is, Alexandra. For you, no question about it. But I probably want you to do a little bit more than those basic three like we talked about. You know? But yes, I think three times a week is great. And you can do it, I think, two different ways. I think we talked about it before. Either you can split it, like upper body one day, lower body the next, and then full body. The third, I like that because then you hit each body part twice. Well, you can do full body every single day, or you can go up or lower, up or lower, like keep on going back and forth like that. And then I know you can do your, um, you can throw your hit in, in there before or after. You can go either way. Mix it up maybe sometimes. Whatever you do first, you prioritize. Mm -hmm. okay. Mike, any benefits of incline treadmill walk? Oh yeah, I love incline. I do it all the time. I mean, that's how I do my, um, you know, if I'm doing an intro workout at home on the treadmill, like a hit thing, I, I, I don't run because of my knee. My treadmill goes to 15 degrees. You get to 15 degrees at like three and a half miles an hour, you're, you're rocking. I mean, you can really get your heart rate up there. But I typically like to keep the treadmill at 3, 3.2 and I do my base building, and I vary from maybe, because I don't want my heart to go above 110, you know, I'll go for maybe one to six, 7% and kind of like hang around there. You know, I wish I could run, I can't with my knee. My, my knee would swell up if I really ran. Maybe if I really micro progress, like ran one minute one day, then, then two minutes two days later, and three minutes three days later, and got myself up to running three miles. Maybe I'll do that one day. But I'm doing, I know how Susan, Susan's knee's doing, but I'm doing really good with his knees over toes. My knee hasn't felt this good in, in a long time. All right, guys, I'm going to rock. I'm going to go. Okay, okay well, one more from Chris. Let's see. Okay, Chris, would you would, would like to build up your Facebook time restricted Would like to build up your Facebook time restricted group for all of us to have a great community. Do you mind if I post some of the meals on, on that page? Let's build up. Yeah, of course, Chris, definitely do that. Yeah, you can definitely post. I'm not sure if, if when you post, if it goes on automatically, or I have to approve it. I'll, let me look. I'm not great with Facebook. Um, because even this live stream, I don't think I'm able to go live in that group. I'm able to go live in the, that low carb, and I think my Mike Cole, the fitness page, you might be watching on now. But definitely, yeah, of course, Chris, definitely. This is Gwen. Um, I'm going to try real hard this week to get the protein, maybe focus on that one thing, I, I think that's a great way to do it, Gwen, focus on one thing at a time. Say this week, from now on, you're gonna work on protein. I think that's great. It will be better, calories is harder, that sounds good. Plus, like we said, if you focus on protein, the net calories of protein are gonna be so much less, right? I'm watching live, on, oh, you're live, I am live on time, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. You're watching live on time-restricted eating. I didn't think I was live on that today. I guess I don't know what I'm doing. All right, <laughs> that's funny, Chris. That sounds good, yeah, I would love you to do that, Chris, for sure. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Have a wonderful day. I don't know if, if you guys have walked yet. Uh, I know Susan's with I don't know if you walked yet today, Chris, or if you're going to plan on walking after this, but get outside, guys. Take a walk. If it's raining, if you got something in your house, jump on the treadmill in your house. Do something. You know, make Sundays like a good exercise day, and I appreciate you showing up. Thanks for all the super chats. Chris, Alexandra, retired 2019. Thanks for the super chat. So nice here. And I'll see everybody next week. Take care. CrossFit this morning, Susan, oh, that's great, excellent.